What is up, everybody? Alex here from Alto Music with another great guest. We are just on fire here at NAMM 2017. And how appropriate to be right outside the food court for this one, because I got my good friend, Chef Brian Sow of Taste of Metal, up, also of the band over the past. This guy freaking shreds on guitar and shreds in the kitchen. So first of all, you've just released Time to Display, your EP with Over the Past. How's that been? It's been great. I mean, it's... Uh Oh, man, I was writing and recording that for a long time with, you know, writing with the rest of the band, but doing a lot of the production on my own. And I only had like an hour every other day before I had to go into the kitchen and work. And, you know, working in the restaurant business, you're working uh, minimum 10 hours, but usually turns into 12 or 14. And after about a year of recording three songs, I finally got it done. And it's on Spotify, iTunes, over the past uh, the EP is called Time Display. Uh, it's much more alternative 90s rock um, than what you know most people know me for, which is Taste of Metal on Metal Injection. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, season two comes out uh, February, um, and we have a new episode coming out every week on that. The first season was five episodes. This season is eight, so it's going to be awesome. Yeah, and uh, man, I, I really wish you could combine. Like, maybe if you can make a recording studio slash kitchen, you'd be a millionaire if you could find a way to combine this. Too. Well, it's funny you mentioned that, Alex. So I recently left uh, Silk Hospitality, um, you know, where I had been cutting my teeth for the past four years. And I, actually, I haven't really announced this publicly or anything, but um, not that it's a secret. But I started Fat Rat Catering, which most people do know now. Um, but I'm also developing Fat Rat Farms in South Jersey, uh, which will kind of be my home base. So it's going to be my catering facility, a seasonal restaurant, as well as my recording studio. So uh, that'll be on the second floor. It should, it'll be fun. It's, it's going to be a long project. I'm DIYing the, the, the whole shebang. But um, I think we're in the era of DIY, yeah. especially in music, you know, and I'm just taking it to the farms. Exactly. And um, with Taste of Metal, as somebody who's a huge fan of it, you know, I watch, I've watched all five episodes over and over again because I never get tired of it. And for those of you who don't know, the first episodes included our homeboy John from Candiria, Zach Wilde, Ben Wyman of Dillinger Escape Plan, Kill Switch Engage, and I know this one, I know this one, I know this one. Um, who was it? Who, who am I missing? Uh, I'm drawing a blank too right now. Zach Wilde, Dillinger, Escape Plan, Kill Switch Cage, Candiria, and... Uh, Yon Hagel. Yon, uh, Amon Amarth. Yeah. Sorry, Amon Amarth. You, you, I, we wouldn't forget you ever again. But <laughs> And it was really successful. I mean, to combine what I feel, what you know, something metalheads would love, but it's also something that people who are interested in culinary would love. So, did, because you're friends with Frank from Metal Injection that hosts it, uh, how did you guys start this whole thing? Well, it uh, started, you know, partying one night where I met Frank when uh, I was trying to seduce him. No, but in all seriousness, um, I've been a metalhead and a musician for longer than I've been a chef. And um, I, I just, after about 10 years in the business, the culinary business, I decided to start treating myself. So I was starting to go to show, shows more often. And then I got invited to some parties. And at one of these parties is where I had met Frank Godla. And, you know, him and I are super close, super Shout tight friends. Frank. Shout out to Frank. I love you, brother. Um, and he was really, it was really his brainchild, the, the concept of Taste of Metal. And, you know, I fit the bill. I was a metalhead and I was a professional chef. I had a, you know, half decent pedigree as far as my chef career goes. And um, it just perfectly married my, t you know, the two loves of my life, aside from my daughter and my wife, of course. <laughs> I was about you know. to say that. Uh, my, my two hobbies, my two favorite hobbies, let's say that. And, um, and now, for those of you who have never saw it before, I'll just give a quick rundown. It's where we bring in known metal musicians like we just mentioned, and Chef Brian Sow here makes a dish that is makes me hungry every time. I made the mistake of watching it at work, and I was starving for the rest of the day. Um, and he claims that they are inspired by uh, the musicians' music, their latest albums, or just about anything they've done. So with Zach Weil, you made the Berserker spicy chicken sandwich. And Man, uh, dude, you know the show better than me. <laughs> and uh, Kill Switch Engage, the lobster yaki ramen. Now, being that I'm not a chef, I can't really, like, uh, you know, understand it that much. But, like, cause, you know, when I think of Kill Switch Engage and food, I think of, like, you know, just eating, like, chicken wings and, like, drinking <laughs> beer and Jack Daniels all day. But, like... Um, what uh, what what do you look for when you're making these dishes? How does how does the music translate to the dish? Well, um, 
Before I even go into that area, something I've always said is that there are so many parallels in the world of music creation and in the world of food creation. Um, I think you draw from very similar places and um, you, 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 you create them in a very similar manner, but the result's different. You know, music is sound, obviously, and food is, you know, something you're going to eat. But as far as what you could get inspired by, it's really anything. And I've spoken on this topic extensively with many of the musicians who've been on the show, and it's all the same. You can get inspired by a beautiful sunny day as much as you can get inspired by a rainy day. And it's the same way with food. Beautiful sunny day, maybe I want to go with something barbecue. Uh, you know, uh, cold rainy day, I probably will go in the more soup you know, soupy or a braised type, you know, a braised meat type of direction. So um, when it comes to creating food that's inspired by a musical artist, it's very easy for me to get inspired by music, you know, because it's already an inspired thing. And, you know, sometimes it's easier than uh, other, you know, sometimes some artists are easier than others. Like, uh, for example, if I had to make a, a dish for behemoth, you know, that would take a little bit more out of me because uh, how do I make the food more satanic? I'm not, not too sure. I, I guess goat, a goat dish, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> Very true. yeah. Uh, a goat head dish. Um, I, say, I guess it wasn't so hard. Yeah, um, cattle decapitation would have to be just a vegetarian dish. Well, maybe I'll make head cheese with like the eyeballs and the brain or yeah. something like that. Uh, but as far as the artists that have been on, most of these artists, I mean, I am huge fans of them. You know, it was, it was a, a total starstruck moment for me to meet Zach Wild, but it wasn't very hard for me to create the Berserker Spicy Fried Chicken Sandwich um, because it just, that's what came, that was the inspiration that came from his music and his personality and, you know, something big, bold, and a little crazy, you know, and hot licks, you know, you got hot chicken. So, um, it, that's really where it is. I don't have a simple answer for it. It's a very broad thing. And I'm pretty sure there are many people out there that are just insp as inspired by music as I am and then create food. But maybe I just have the culinary training to actually execute it. Or maybe I have the, un because uh, I'm also a musician, I have an understanding of music to create, you know, kind of find places to draw inspiration because from. I've seen you play with over the past at Bowery Electric and you are just as phenomenal of a guitar player as you are a chef. So like, and you know, I it's weird because I asked myself at that show actually, I really asked myself this as it was, you know, doing a shot of Jack Daniels. How does one, uh, you know, play guitar so well and make such a phenomenal and appetizing looking, you know, you're not working, you're not flipping a burger, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. You're, you know, those down with yuzu chicken wings looked complicated as hell, the scallop dish with Dillinger, like, so it's like, but now that you just mentioned that, it seems like they really do go hand in hand, especially if you enjoy doing both. Right? Oh, easily. I mean, uh, you know, Matt Heafy, yeah. is, he's a great cook. Yeah. Um, I've heard incredible things about Dez. I heard that he's an incredible cook as Devil well Driver. from Devil Driver. Yeah, um, you know there are tons of people. Johan, for example, you know I wouldn't say he's a culinarian, but dude, when he was on the episode, him and Zach, well, wow, they were just very laser focused on on the task at hand, you know. And I could easily see them, you know, very quickly improving their skills uh, as far as cooking goes. Um, that's for Ben Wyman. For well, Ben Wyman, you know, he's one of those guys he just didn't give a shit, but that's what made the episode so good. <laughs> yeah, at Kill Switch again. Yeah, same thing with Kill Switch. Um, but yeah, as far as, you know, being able to do both, honestly, it, I don't think it's such an out there concept. What I do think is making people think it's a lot more special than it is. Not to discredit what I do or, or what the show's about, but you know, there are people out there that are incredible musicians and are also, you know, incredible cooks. Probably cook better than me or just as good. It's, you know, it's not that hard. Um, it's just about dedicating yourself to it. So I can't shred like Zach Wilde, but you know, if I put my mind to it and, and did, you know, tried to shred like that every day, I'm pretty sure I'd be on the trajectory. So um, for me, I'm just super, super lucky that um, I'm able to take two very, uh, two hobbies that are very involved and bring them together. That's awesome. And uh, final question, because with Alto, we specialize in musical gear. And I know you had a story for Alto that. Yeah, so I went to the Culinary Institute of America, which is in Hyde Park, yeah. New York. And uh, Alto Music was the closest uh, 
uh, music store. So when I would need to buy strings or cables or some or picks, I'd always go over there. But there was just one, the first day I went in, um, I walked in and there was this blue uh, blue Jackson Pro series made in Japan with the Floyd Rose and Seymour Duncan pickups, and I was I just had to have that guitar. So I brought in a. Uh, uh, Fernandez, I think it's the Vertigo model. It had the sustainer and everything, and I traded it towards that. And yeah, yeah. Was so. this in our uh, Wappingers Falls location yes, or Middletown? It was in Wa Wappingers Falls. Okay. Yes, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Middletown. Middletown. Middletown yeah. Middletown. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I remember. You know, I don't remember who the guy was I was doing the deal with, but I was like, I have to have that Blue Jackson, and it was just cool. So when I met you, and you're like, oh, you know, I'm from Alto Music. I was like, no shit, dude. Like. So it's kind of cool to be on, to, to be doing this with you right yeah, now. It's great yeah. to have you here. I mean, and also a fellow New York Cityer. It's it's great. I've been feeling so out of place because everybody in California loves each other and is so friendly. I felt so out of place. I need another fellow <laughs> New York metalhead with me. And uh, last but not least, just uh, finally, because uh, we deal in special gear, as we just mentioned, uh, what's some of the gear that you use when playing with Over the Past? Uh, well, I'm a big time tweaker as far as guitars go, so I like to buy my own parts and put my guitars together. So I'm typically a Strat and Tele guy uh, with a locking tremolo on it. So um, FUtone.com is one of the is one of my uh, endorses me. One of my favorite brands. Um, but yeah, like I said, mainly Super Strat style guitars, uh, EVH guitars. I, I, I'm in love with those guitars. Uh, Dunlop string, string and picks. Uh, you know, they hook me up all the time. They're great people. They're, great people. they're incredible. Was the first people we've interviewed in there. They're they're good guys, man. Yeah, Chris, shout out to Chris Johnson at Dunlop. Um, and I'm a Line Six Helix user. With that said, before I get flamed on the internet about using modeling technology. I love, love tube amps, but I've been raised in a you know, small apartment in New York City, and I just don't have the ability to have a uh, half stack and crank it up. It and just For a solid state amp, I mean, Line 6 is phenomenal. I mean, they used to have, I forgot what model it was. I think it was like the Spider. It was Line 6 Spider 2, I think, mm -hmm. or something like that. But you can adjust the amp. They had a little screen. It gets, you could get a sound like Kill Switch Gauge or Slipknot or Lamb of yeah, God yeah. and stuff like that. And I thought that was awesome. Like, for a solid state amp, I think Line 6 is the way to go. I mean, it's very versatile, and you know, it's great for kids that are just. I, for me personally, I think it's a great starter amp. It's very versatile, and you can kind of understand effects and EQ settings and things like that. But you know, the Helix is a fucking phenomenal product. I love that thing. I gig with it all the time, um, and I, you know, I run it with two Tech Twenty One. Um, uh, what the hell is that amp? With these two Tech Twenty One amps, and it sounds phenomenal, man. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So I just want to thank you for coming by. Thanks for having Everybody, me. Everybody, my good friend, Chef Brian Sow. Be sure to check out the new season of Taste of Metal, hosted by Metal Injection. Shout out to Frank. NAM 2017, everybody.